few plants around here that are looking pretty woebegone, but that's okay, because that's what happens when they're constantly harvested for the florist industry. This is a flower farm. I'm near Belhanna, just a half an hour east of Adelaide. This property has 12 hectares of plants that are grown to be cut for floral arrangements, and there's quite a bit of variety, around 100 species. About two thirds of the space has African members of the Protea family, and the other third is for Australian natives. Ange and Des Kidman have been working this farm for 19 years and grew potatoes in the Mallee before that. On that farm just happened to be a 60 acre block of gelatin wax. Wow. That was planted there in the 80s as a try to find other ventures for the Mallee. And so yeah, we fell into flower growing by total accident. And then after six years of, of being there, we decided to get a bit close to Adelaide and found this farm um, and just had to have it. These bunches are stunning. What have you used? Well, this is purely Australian, all of these species. A mixture of eucalyptus, acacia, rice flower, tea tree. Pretty gorgeous, hey? And this one would last forever. Everything would dry as you see it. So that one's a great long living one. This one here is a mixture of protea, so African, leucodendron, also African, and Australian foliages with a gorgeous little Australian isopoga in there. They're great combinations. Now, obviously, you and Des are a good combination running this business. Yeah. How do you divide up who does what? We fell into our role, Sophie. Nothing was ever really planned. It's just I seem to be able to remember the names of, well, most of the things that we grow. And Desi just seemed to love trading. So he was the business side of the, of the business and I was the practical side, which was quite nice still, really, yeah. Time to take a look around the farm. Proteas, leucodendrons and leucospermums are very much African plants, but their similarity to Australian species like waratahs and banksias is obvious. Even though they're of African origin, the florists bung them all into the same category and call them natives. And they're such amazing long-lasters because you can get several weeks off them in a vase and then they dry. That's true. And the other thing we love about them is just how visually textual and beautiful they are. Would it be fair to say that the Protea family was the backbone of the business? Definitely been that, um, but we are more and more experimenting with Australian flora now, um, and especially getting into different foliages, eucalyptus foliages, which we love. With its cute round foliage, it's easy to see why Silver Mountain Gum is popular. Ange and Des have gone for it in a big way. We've got about a thousand, wow. um, with, with a couple of hundred to go in this year. Now, if left to their own devices, these would become small trees. And while these plants are small, you've got some bigger ones as well. Yeah, we do. These are young, they're a couple of years old. And once they're at about two inches in diameter, you can cut them back as hard as you like. But we usually like to keep them at max at about six feet so that you can pick them easily enough, yeah. And because they've got a lignotuber that's designed to respond to fire, they don't care about you hacking them. They don't. They don't. They seem to love it. We also grow eucalyptus crenulata, or Victorian silver gum. It's a really beautiful one. It has a peppery fragrance to oh, it. Lovely. We love this because it's a eucalyptus and that has an olive green colour, which is a bit more unusual, and a little tiny dainty leaf. Next stop, Eucalyptus pluricarpa. This is a beautiful malagum, and we love this one particularly because of the white nuts. is nutting and, and beautiful and ready for harvest from February onwards. And, and the florists love to use it with nuts on the tip, but also it's quite gorgeous even just without the nuts on the tip. Long vase life, yeah. once again. And it's a mallee species and you're keeping them low for harvesting, but there's a lesson in this for home gardeners, isn't That's it? That's right. So you don't need a huge space to be able to have one of these in your garden because you can, you just keep pruning them back and they will shoot out as a multi-trunked tree from the lignotuber and you can keep them as tall or as short as you like. Ange also has natives with showy floral displays. We used to grow lots of gelatin wax, but we grow less now uh, because it's not suited to here, but we do grow other beautiful small flowers like Agonis. We love this because it's white, it flowers for many, many months, and it can tolerate being harvested back pretty hard every year. And so how much would you cut it back? About three quarters of a metre to a metre. I mean, we're watering and fertilising these every year, so you have mm -hmm. to give them some love. But yes, they totally can handle that, as you can see.
These rice flowers are looking gorgeous. Yeah, one of my favourite Aussie flowers. The challenge with them is that they don't last, well, probably beyond seven or eight years. So they're one that we plan to replant always. Industry standard is that you replace about 10% of your plantation every year. Uh, we've got 30 acres, so it's about three acres of replanting. So you can see what we're doing when we're not picking flowers. Absolutely. <laughs> and the tea tree are beautiful too. Yep, totally stunning. Um, they are quite a hit, and especially in spring, they go so well with all the spring flowers. We also are growing kangaroo paw in mm -hmm. red, orange and yellow. And we've got some waratahs, also my favourites. Mm -hmm. Changing tastes in floral displays has not only led to Ange and Des changing what they grow, it's had an effect on the way they do business. Now, previously you were exporting, but that's changed. It has. So recently we've seen um, a huge demand from the locals to buy local product. We've loved that. And we also love the idea of the flowers not travelling right around the country or even overseas, and that just keeping them local means that they're going to be fresher. And it's a lot more sustainable product. It wasn't that long ago that people would ring and asked if we grew lilies and roses, and when we said no, they would just hang up. So yeah, things have changed, and which is fantastic. And now people are wanting native flowers, which is so brilliant. And now they're taking pride of place in vases all across the country.